Hello there folks, Peter here with BlackRock Business. Thank you for tuning into this video. Today we're going to talk about the financial settings area in your general preferences for QuickBooks Point of Sale. Before we jump to it, I'm going to ask you if you like getting all your answers to all your questions. It doesn't always happen in the videos here, but it can happen if you jump to the link down below that is for our QuickBooks Point of Sale Facebook group join the community and ask any questions you have and like-minded users of QuickBooks Point of Sale can talk back and forth with you on the Facebook group. Just hit that link down there. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, uh, YouTube. Uh, if you're on YouTube right now, you can just hit the subscribe button down below. Otherwise, jump on over to YouTube and look for BlackRock POS or BlackRock QuickBooks Open Invoices over in QuickBooks Accounting. Have actual detailed line items and then all of the other ones would just be summarized and that's what I'm about to explain next so summarized item totals would be every receipt and every document that goes over to QuickBooks accounting just has a single line item and the the text description would be all the items it, it will just list out each and everything on the whole receipt in one line item and I I don't really think there's a big reason why anybody would do it that way. It's perfectly fine if you do. Um, mostly, I think we would do detailed. I mean, it's, it's the default. And then if you need to, for some reason, edit one of your documents over in QuickBooks Accounting after it's synchronized, then you could line by line. Now, the next section here is how to send over your discounted items. Again, by default, we have the first selection, and that's just net value. So to explain this, if you got a receipt, let's say you have an item on there for $5, and they get a discount, they get a dollar off. So that would be sent over on the receipt to QuickBooks Accounting when it's synchronized as a $4 item. Now, some people on their chart of accounts want to track their discounts. And so in that case, you could choose this selection, and you could separate the original item and the discounted value values. So then on the receipt, you would see the $5 item would be its own line item. And then you would also see a line or designation for the discount. And that way, $5 would come into your income account. And the $1 would be a minus on your uh, discount account. So they would end up in different places on your chart of accounts, whereas the net value, you would just end up with $4 on your income account and no other entry. Coming up next, we have how you want to record customers. And so when you make a customer in point of sale, if that customer ends up in QuickBooks Accounting, there is a setting, by the way, on whether you want every customer in QuickBooks Accounting or just the customers who have money or charges on account. I recommend the latter. Uh, so that you only have a minimal am amount of customer names over in QuickBooks Accounting. You don't want to run out of room on your list and have to upgrade to Enterprise. Anyway, sorry, that was a little side note. So this is how the customer ends up in QuickBooks Accounting. By default, it's going to be last name and then first name. But if you'd like to, you can switch it to first and then last, in which case you'd have the customer names in there alphabetically by first name. Not many people like that. And you could do title first and last. Uh, Mr., Mrs., etc. I think that would really be hard to track or organize your customer list that way. But you can do it if you'd like. Now, our last setting on this page is employee hours. Sending over employee hours. If you're doing that, um, we're going to have a whole other video on you know, keeping time for employees, clocking in and clocking out. And of course, this is for sending the hours over to QuickBooks so that it can automatically flow right into payroll. Very handy. Uh, right here, this is the QuickBooks payroll item that would be used with QuickBooks payroll for your employee hours. Now, I'm going to try and get through this real quick. In the financial area, we have accounts, basic, and advanced tabs. I'm going to highly recommend that you don't touch any of this. Uh, the smoothest operations that I see when people are using QuickBooks Point of Sale is when they don't mess with this stuff. 
It's already set up to all the default accounts. And if you can live with that chart of accounts, the way that point of sale is using it, do that because I've seen numerous people try to change where these items are mapped to for accounts and it gets screwed up because they don't understand the way that it balances out. But if you're a super accountant or you totally understand exactly what's going on here and exactly what accounts are doing and why, you can go ahead and change where your inventory, assembly, service, non-inventory, and group, et cetera, et cetera, all end up actually not group because groups happen as a number of other items that are already mapped. Now, the only thing you might change on this page, I might say, is if you want to watch our other video about um, automatically creating sub-accounts for departments or other reasons, uh, that's pretty safe to do because it's just sub-accounts. It doesn't change any of the main accounts. It just makes sub-accounts underneath them. And so if you want to get more granular in your QuickBooks accounting, watch that video. And jump over to advanced here. Once again, these accounts are... I would recommend not changing any of these. If you can live with the buckets that are already set up and mapped by QuickBooks Point of Sale by default, do that. But once again, if you'd like to, if you really know what you're doing, and if you're not going to call me after you screw it up, <laughs> just kidding, um, go ahead and change these if you'd like. But this is where all of these different actions or pieces of the puzzle end up on your chart of accounts uh, in QuickBooks Accounting. So thank you for coming along with me on this video about the financial settings in QuickBooks Point of Sale. My name is Peter with BlackRock Business, and I'm glad you're here. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out the QuickBooks secrets below, as well as jumping over to our Facebook group. Have a great day.